Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back. In my last video, I talked all about my 2014 collection, Le Mot Chandelier, and went into great detail about how I designed it, my inspiration behind it, the construction, the styling. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my 2015 collection, Cherries in the Snow. So this collection was the last big collection that I made. Um, I've actually moved away from doing collections, partly because of the expense, partly because of the time involved, because it's just me doing all the sewing, um, and partly because I don't really design for trends or anything like that. I don't sell seasonal things, so it kind of designing collection goes against my ethos a bit. So I tend to just make new sample gowns now, um, like the ones you see in my videos, when I'm trying to learn a new technique or try and do something different. Um, and I try and keep a range of sample dresses in different styles here for clients to see in different materials, different techniques. So when a client comes to see me to have a dress made, I've got all sorts of different examples that I can show them. But that said, I did actually love designing and making collections and that moment when you see your work out on the catwalk and it all comes together on the night, is it's so exciting, it's such a rush. So the name of this collection was Cherries in the Snow and the name for this collection came from a Revlon nail polish and lipstick. And it's a lipstick and nail polish that's been in production since the 50s. So it's a genuine vintage colour that you can buy. And it's a lipstick I used to wear a lot. It was a colour I absolutely love. And the name just really captured my imagination. Um, and when you look at their advertising, they've got cherries, which are a summer fruit, but with snow on, which is winter. So I love the idea of mixing winter and summer together. So I was thinking about cherries and cherry blossoms and the fleeting nature of, the, of um, cherry blossoms, the fleeting nature of snow sometimes as well. To capture that sort of essence of the snow and the fleetingness of flowers, I actually collaborated with a florist on this collection. So I collaborated with Fiona, who owns Peony and Pearl here in Canberra, who is an incredible florist. She's just so talented. She's got such a great eye for colour and composition. And she makes not just the most amazing bouquets, but she makes the most amazing backdrops and installations for her clients as well. Um, and we'd been talking about doing a flower dress for a while. We'd worked together on other photo shoots where she'd done flowers, more traditional flowers, to go with the photo shoot, like a bouquet for a wedding shoot. And we'd said we wanted to collaborate on something and this seemed like the perfect opportunity and it seemed like the perfect theme as well. So my inspiration as I was designing this collection, so we had the, the winter and the summer, we had cherries and all the cherry colours, and that was my starting point. So I knew I wanted to use the sort of whites and crystals of the snow. And then I wanted to use the reds and pinks and right through to the really, really deep, deep reds of cherries as my colour palette for this collection. And I knew I wanted to show that mix of summer and winter in the pieces as well, which is why I decided to use a lot of feathers and feathery capes and marabou. And then from there, Fiona would add the fresh flowers to each look but in quite unexpected ways it wasn't a case of making bouquets for the um, models to carry down the catwalk we added flowers well you'll see when I show you each dress but we added flowers to headpieces she made flower jewelry like rings and earrings and then our finale gown actually had a flower skirt so you'll see all that in a minute so in the run-up to showing the collection which was shown at Fash Fest here in Canberra and um, Fashionist PR wanted to promote um, that I was involved and that I was collaborating with a florist, but we didn't want to show any of the gowns we were going to be showing. So we actually made a dress that was separate from this collection to use as promotion for our collaboration, which was really exciting. And it gave us a chance to almost do a kind of test run for what we were doing for the catwalk as well. That dress ended up on the cover of a local magazine, which was really exciting. So for the promo game, we didn't want to give away anything that we were doing for the Cherries in the Snow collection, other than the fact that it was going to be a dress with flowers on it. So we moved away from that colour palette completely and came up with something different. Um, I created this beige lace corset with a little hoop crinoline. And then Fiona covered the crinoline in flowers. We had the flowers growing up the corset and entwining down the model's arm. 
and we have flowers in her hair as well. Um, and we shot that on location here in Canberra. And yeah, like I say, it ended up on the cover of a magazine promoting the event and pro promoting me and Fiona, which was really exciting. That was a really good experience of us, how we worked together, um, how the flowers worked on the dress. And uh, Fiona actually used a combination of fake flowers and real flowers. From there, we then worked on the collection. I got everything made and Fiona's hard work was on the day. I'll talk about on the day and how everything came together on the day and what it's like being a backstage at a fashion show getting ready to show your collection at the end. But before that, I'll go through all the different looks that we created together for this show. Like the Mott Chandelier, I've sold a lot of the pieces. In fact, I've only got two dresses and a corset left from this, from this collection to show you in real life. And the rest, I'm just gonna have to show you pictures. So this is the first look from the collection, the first look that came out on the catwalk. And this dress is called Crystalline. It's a white, satin corseted dress overlaying with this iridescent floral lace. It's got a full skirt and it actually had a petticoat underneath it on the catwalk. To accessorise it I made a short ostrich feather cape, ostrich feather cuffs and anklets and then Fiona added fresh flowers. I think she used baby's breath and little white roses that she added to the cuffs and the anklets. She made fresh flower earrings and a fresh flower hairpiece to go with it as well. So the construction of this dress, it has a full steel bone corset inside it and then the skirt attaches from the waist. I talk a lot about this construction method in my previous collection video if you want to go and have a look at that. And if you'd like me to make a tutorial series on how I make corseted dresses when the skirt comes from the waist, let me know in the comments and that's something I'll add to my future videos list. Dress number two was called Simone. It was a very similar shape to the first dress, but this time it was made of white Chantilly lace and I'd made a matching bolero jacket from the lace to go with it. And then the bottom of the skirt and the bottom of the um, sleeves were dip dyed just to the palest pink. So we're starting to bring in that sort of pale pink cherry blossom color now. Then to go with it, I made a white marabou muff and a white marabou hat, which Fiona added the fresh flowers to. The flowers she chose were just white and really pale pink, just to echo the colour of the dress. And then to go with it, I hand dyed some boots, which I found in an op shop. They were originally cream. Um, I was going to do them cream, but they were too cream against the white of the dress. So I actually ended up dyeing them pink. For their hair and makeup for all of the looks, I kept it very vintage, very 50s to go with when the lipstick was first released. So that was where the inspiration for that came with. And I think it just needed, um, unlike the last collection, which was very dramatic, it just needed that really soft vintage hair and vintage makeup to go with these designs. So it's a yeah, very different look on the catwalk from the last one. Look three was called Belle and I've still got the corset from this one. I don't have the skirt or the cape. So it was this beautiful pink rose print fabric, rose print satin corset, a big tulle skirt and a marabou wrap. Fiona did a fresh flower hairpiece to go with this one. So this is the corset. It's a silk satin corset with the rose print satin and Chantilly lace. I'll pop it onto the mannequin so you can see it better. So to make a corset like this, what I do is I make the base corset and then I put it onto my dress form and then I drape the satin on here so I can see where the pleats are gonna go. I don't start with a pattern. If I was doing a production run of it, I'd need a pattern so they're all the same. But for one-off pieces, I can just drape on the dress form and see where the fabric takes me. So what I did, I started the draping on this side, so asymmetrical from probably around here, and I brought it up over the bust and over the shoulder. Now this satin had a little bit of a stretch to it, so I've left the stretch going this way in the shoulder for a good fit. Put the pleats in. I've done a little dart there where it comes into the strap, and then it's smooth over this part. And then I finished it. It looks like I've ended up with two pieces there. And then I've added the lace, and this is all hand sewn. So I hand sew it on with a clear thread so you can't see it and I put my eyelets through last so they go through all of the pleating. So that was the first side. And then I've draped and pleated the second side asymmetrically coming down over the other side of the bust and then around and down the sides here 
and then finishing it at the back. Then to finish the edges of the satin, I just do a double turn inside and hand stitch it down. And then I cut and hand stitch all of the lace where I want it to go. So, and again, I don't think I've done a tutorial quite like this. So that's probably something else I can do in the future. If you'd like me to, just let me know. And then I've stopped the cor corset quite short below the waist again, which means the tulle puffs from up here, which gives a really nice proportion when you've got a big puffy skirt and a corset. So I find, I talked about it in the last video as well, but I find if you cut your corset long and then your puff of skirt starts here, it makes your proportion look funny and can make your legs look really short. So I like to keep my corsets to just below the waist and then puff them out for a big skirt. So then look four was called Emma and that was made from this same rose print satin, but I actually made the full gown from this satin. So that was a full pink floral print ball gown. Again, it was corseted, the skirt came from the waist, then it had a petticoat underneath it to give it that really full look. To go with that one, I made a marabou cape, and then I made a little hand blocked pillbox hat, which I covered in the same rose print fabric, which had a little veil with it. Um, Fiona added fresh roses to the little pillbox hat, and around the neck of the cape, which was really pretty, because she had this kind of ring of pink roses around her neck. And Fiona matched the color of those roses to the color of the fabric. It's funny, different pictures look really different. So some pictures it's come up really peach, but it's actually a really nice pink. It's not as peach as it looks in some photos. Either the photographer's done it on purpose or the lighting's made it look very peachy rather than pink, but it's, it's definitely pink in real life. The next dress is when we really started to bring the cherry red in. And this dress is called Maraschino. Again, it's got a full corset underneath it and then the skirt comes from the waist. It's made from miles and miles of hand-dyed silk chiffon. So this was probably the hardest thing I have ever dyed because I had to dye the top part and the bottom part separately and try and get them the same red. They didn't want to go the same red. Silk doesn't take dye brilliantly to get colors this vibrant. And the first few times it came out quite coral and I kept having to re-dye it and re-dye it to try and get the red that I wanted. I almost gave up on this dress a few times, but I'm so glad I didn't because it became one of my favorite looks that I've ever created. Um, on the night, people's jaws just hit the floor when this dress came out. And it's the dress that so many people still mention who've seen pictures of the show or who were there at the show. This is the one that really stuck in their mind. So I've got fake flowers on the shoulders here, but when we showed it, Fiona created these red rose shoulder pads to go on it and then these drapes of red rose petals down the back of the dress. I think the effect was so dramatic on the night because the catwalk was white. So she was just this column of colour coming up from this white catwalk and it was just so dramatic. It was so dramatic. Let me turn, turn it around and I'll show you the back. At the back, the pleated silk chiffon on the shoulders then turns into this huge cape which glides down the back and because it's silk chiffon as she walked it just took off in the wind oh, it's come apart it was actually joined to about there it's come unstitched a bit there so if you imagine the fresh roses on the shoulders and then drapes of fresh red rose petals down the back and um, one of the things Fiona was really worried about when we were doing the, the fresh flowers when she was putting, putting it on was that the something would fall off on the catwalk. And this dress, she got to the end of the catwalk. As she turned around at the end of the catwalk, one single red rose petal fell off and glided down and stayed on the white catwalk as she walked away. And it was just the most perfect thing that could have happened. We couldn't have planned it. We couldn't have done it if we tried to do it but it just created this extra magical little moment as just this one red rose petal just fell and left behind as she walked. Another um, issue with dyeing this was that I wanted to get the ombre at the same height in the skirt and in the cape. So because I dyed the fabric for the skirt, the fabric for the top of the corset and the fabric for the cape completely separately, I had to do a lot of measuring and making sure everything was gonna line up and fade at exactly the same point which was really really tricky but it worked out really well so you can see there you go if i hold the skirt 
and the cape together you can see they fade at, at pretty much the same point so I was really happy with how that turned out um, Fiona then yeah Fiona then created these shoulder pads out of fake flowers afterwards so that we could show it um, afterwards without having to replace the fresh flowers every time I think this is a dress that I'm never going to sell this is one of those pieces that I put my heart and soul into and it's just one of those key pieces from my career and I just want to keep it as a memory so this is a dress that's not for sale this is one that I'll be just keeping in my own archive for my own future to look at it and just remember it that said I would happily recreate it if anyone wanted me to recreate it for them Oh, unfortunately that's the last dress that I've got left to show you in person, in real life. The rest all have to be pictures. So look six was called Cherry Kiss and it was made from a lovely red and black rose print satin. Um, slightly different to the pink one that I used earlier in the collection. This one had a lot, the rose print was a lot smaller on it. So this is the point in the collection where I started going a little bit darker. So I put a black petticoat underneath this dress. She had a black marabou muff and then a black um, marabou and tulle cape to go with it. For the flowers for this one, Fiona created a hat and it's still one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. So she used dark red roses, she used berries, she used chrysanthemums and she created literally a whole hat. It was almost like a helmet that went on over our model's hair and it was just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was just incredible. And I think it just finished the look perfectly. Um, and it's not something I've ever seen another florist do. Fiona's, Fiona is so unique. She's just incredible. So look seven was called Morello. Um, and this was very similar to the white into blush pink lace that I did, did near the start. But this time it was black satin and then I dyed the lace the deepest burgundy and it finished in bright red at the hem of the dress and the cuffs. Then to go with it I made a black ostrich feather hat. So we decided this one didn't need too many flowers with it. It didn't need much embellishment because it was already quite dramatic by itself. So the only thing Fiona made to go with this one was a fresh flower ring. Look 8 was called Black Forest and this had the red rose print fabric at the top of the corset. And then I ombre dyed the tool for the skirt of this one. This is a really long skirt. It was really full, but we only put a really small petticoat underneath it. I didn't want it to be huge. So the, the tool on the skirt dyed from red right through to deep burgundies and then black at the very bottom. And I finished it around the waist with lots of crystals. So to go with it, she had black gloves and a black ostrich feather cape. And then Fiona made the most beautiful orchid hair clip to go with this. So, so far the collection's gone from the white into the pinks, into reds, and then through to those really deep cherry colours. So for the last two dresses, I wanted to bring back the colours from the whole collection. Look 9 was called Maya. It was white at the top with white Chantilly lace. Then I ombre dyed the skirt from pink into red and then into the deep colours at the bottom. But this time it was over white satin, so you still had that lightness coming through and really showing up the ombre. And then I finished the waist with a lot of crystals in an ombre up the waistband, going up from the reds and pinks up to the white, I think I used white opal crystals at the top. And then to go with this one, Fiona made the most amazing red rose and berry headpiece. Um, this was one of the pieces that didn't use fresh flowers just because there wasn't enough time on the day for Fiona to create everything she needed to create. So this was one of the pieces she could create in advance using fake flowers. Um, for some of the other dresses we had, like the head pieces and everything, the bases were all done that she just had to put the flowers onto. So we did as much prep before the day as we could. So this brings us to the finale look for the whole thing. So again, I wanted to bring in a lot of the colours from the collection. And this was our showstopper piece that really showed my work as a designer and my skills of what I can do sewing wise, but also showed Fiona's creativity and her skills with flowers as well. So we created a dress that was white, that ombre down to pink and red at the bottom, but it did it in crystals and flowers and dyeing. So there was a corset with a peplum skirt attached to it. 
The corset was covered completely in crystals that went from white opal down to pale pinks to a darker pink. And then Fiona carried that ombre going with the flowers on the, pe on the peplum. And then underneath it, I made a skirt that then carried the ombre going again from the pink down to the red in the tulle. And then to go with it, I created a cape just made from ostrich feathers, little tiny ostrich feathers. And I put iridescent glitter down the middle of each one. And then she just had a really simple birdcage veil in her hair. So for the skirt, for this one, Fiona actually used a mixture of fake flowers and fresh flowers. So she created a, a sort of base with the fake flowers. So then added the fresh flowers in between them. Again, because it was so time consuming, she wouldn't have been able to do it on the day. Um, and this, the moment this one stepped out onto the catwalk, it just, everyone gasped. And I was backstage, I could just see it on the big screen at the back of the catwalk. And the crystals in the light on the catwalk just looked incredible. This was, yeah, it was the perfect end to this 10 piece collection. Um, and then not long after we'd showed the collection and I put the pictures up online, I actually had a bride contact me and ask me if this dress was available to buy. And she wore it for her wedding. Um, Fiona actually kept the um, fake flowers on and then replaced all the fresh flowers with fake flowers. And my client, yeah, she wore it for her wedding and it's, yeah, what a keepsake, what a, I'll put the pictures up and you can see how it looked. It was just amazing to think that something this different, this dramatic, this unique was getting worn for a wedding. It was so special. Okay, so that's the whole collection and the design process and, and the order it was shown on the catwalk. But I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about what goes on backstage at a big fashion show like Fashfest. Um, Fiona and I arrived really early on the date because Fiona had so much work to do adding all of the fresh flowers to the dresses. So we were there, I think, before anyone was there. I think we were there when <laughs> before any of the crew or models or anyone turned up. We unloaded all the dresses. We'd done as much prep as we could before the day. Um, Fiona had been to the flower markets, I think, the day before in Sydney and bought everything she needed. Um, and we arrived with so much stuff. It was just ridiculous. Um, wheeled everything backstage and set ourselves up ready to work on everything. So thankfully it was winter and where we were backstage was really cold. Uh, not so great for models, but really good for fresh flowers. One of Fiona's biggest concerns was that, was that the flowers weren't gonna last the day and they weren't gonna look good on the catwalk. So that cool condition backstage was almost like being in a fridge for the flowers and it actually kept them in really good condition and they were fine by the time they went on. So we worked all day, I helped. I had a couple of friends come and help too. And um, with Fiona guiding us and helping her as much as we could to add all the flowers to everything. Um, during the day, ABC News turned up and did an interview with me. So I put on my dress that I wore. I haven't shown you my dress. Oh my God. I'll show you my dress after. So I do still have that in a bag somewhere. I will dig that out and show you my dress in a minute. Yep. Yeah, so I did an interview with ABC News, which I didn't actually get to see because it aired that night while I was still backstage waiting for the show to start. And um, eventually all the models and hair and makeup and production, everyone turns up and it gets really chaotic backstage. Now, my models had all been to the hairdresser during the day and had their hair set. But some of the models were walking for other designers before they walked to me, for me. So this means that hair, makeup and clothes have to be changed so fast and it is just nuts. So there's a lot of sitting around waiting and then suddenly you'll get models run at you from all directions and you're trying to get another designer's clothes off really carefully, get your own clothes onto them while hair and makeup are there trying to do their bit. We're trying to put in fresh hair pieces and flowers as well and make sure head pieces are all attached, make sure they've got the right jewellery and the right shoes and everything's perfect to go on the catwalk. And it is probably 10 minutes of just bedlam. So. We get the other models already well in advance, the ones who can be ready well in advance. And then just that changeover is just nuts. <laughs> it was absolutely crazy. But we did it, we got everyone on the catwalk and the show goes down and you put your heart and your soul and so much time into a show and then it's over just like that. So, and um, my daughter actually, she was 
five at the time. Um, she had a dress that matched the pink fabric from a photo shoot that we'd done um, a while before and she wore her dress to watch the show and I made her a little feathery cape to go with it so she matched and um, she was sat in the in the um, in the audience with my husband and my friends watching it and when the models came out for their parade at the end she joined in with them <laughs> and walked the catwalk with them and then came backstage and then walked out with me and Fiona onto the catwalk at the end and we actually had some flowers left over um, and we gave them to Lil and she was handing them out to the people in the front row and it was just the cutest thing. It was so cute. I don't think she'd do it now. She was a lot braver back then, bless her. But it was just such a, it was such a great end to a great show. Um, the feedback I got from this collection was just incredible. I sold so many of the pieces um, over the next year or so. Um, the headpieces, the capes, yeah, all the dresses apart from what you see here, which was just amazing. So Fiona's floristry business was quite new back then um, and she's just grown and grown and grown since um, she's just doing incredible work I haven't seen her in ages because we live at opposite ends of town and she, she we're both so busy um, that her business is just going from strength to strength and she is so talented so if you are in Canberra and you need a florist hit up Fiona from Poonie and Pearl I'll put the link in the description she's just amazing so like the previous collection, I then collaborated with Laurie Cicchini to shoot the collection afterwards. Only this time, because everything had fresh flowers on, we had to do it really, really quickly. So after the show, we packed everything up, always the last to leave because everyone else has got small clothes that just fit into a bag and they're gone. I've always got rails and huge gowns and petticoats and a million other things. And Fiona had all her floristry stuff to pack up. And because everything had fresh flowers on it, we had to be super, super careful with how we packed it. So I actually managed to load everything into my car and I left it in my car overnight because it was winter in Canberra, it's really cold in winter, so overnight. So it was like my everything was refrigerated in my car. And the next morning we drove to Laurie's house and she shot the collection. So um, when I've shot with Laurie like this, I'm always happy for her to take control of the styling at this point. I've styled it how I want it for the catwalk and I'm happy for Laurie to then style it how she sees it to fit in with her vision for how she wanted to shoot it. And she decided to style it with um, some wigs in sort of whites and blush pinks and purples, which gave it a very different look, but it just, it was so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I'll put the pictures up here so you can see Laurie's vision and how she shot my Cherries in the Snow collection. So the last dress to show you, and I can't believe I almost forgot this, is the dress I made for myself to wear when I came out at the end. As I said last time, I like to dress to match my collection when I come out. I think that's really important um, for me as a designer. It's something I like to do. So I actually made this a few months earlier to wear to a friend's wedding because I knew I had the collection coming up. I figured I'd wear it for the wedding and then I'd have it ready to wear on the catwalks. It's a corseted dress, this time made from petal pink satin with the full corset inside it. And then I ombre dyed the lace in pink to red, which is my favorite color combination. And then the lace at the top of the corset came up just into a little cap sleeve at the top. And I love this dress, it doesn't fit me at the minute, but this is another piece that I will, I will be keeping and hopefully wearing again sometime. So when I wore it to the wedding, I made a little pillbox hat to go with it. And on the day of the show, Fiona made me a fresh flower, flower crown to go with it. So there you go, that was my 2015 collection, Cherries in the Snow, which the whole concept, all of the designs just came from the name of a lipstick. So let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Let me know if you want to see videos of any of the construction techniques I used here as well. And I'll be back soon with a new video. Thanks for watching.